May I come in, sir? Please come, Manan. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, Manan. Please sit down. Thank you, sir. So, Manan, if you are comfortable, please introduce yourself. Sir, my name is Manan Agarwal. I am from Lucknow, Uttar Pradesh. Sir, I have done Bachelor of Technology in Chemical Engineering from IIT Bombay. Sir, my interests include reading books on international relations and reflective writing, sir. So, Manan, uh, why from IIT Bombay background, sir. you have such an illustrious career ahead in that sector. What brings you to civil services? What are the features which have enamored you? Sir, the, uh, the first feature that enamors me is the uh, job satisfaction. So, when uh, during second year of my college, when I volunteered for the national service scheme, sir, I realized that the amount of satisfaction that I get when I work for the well-being of others. And the civil services offers this opportunity to us at the widest scale. And so, therefore, I decided that I would uh, join the civil services, sir. Okay. So, you didn't take up a job also? No, sir, I did not take up a job. You passed <coughs> out in? Oh, 2020. Sir. All right. So, you are from uh, UP, the Pradesh. Yes, sir. Now, tell me, everywhere it is like that, but in UP more, that politics and, and crime have mixed up. You know, they have mixed up to an, ex to an extent that it is very difficult to take them out. Do you agree? Sir, uh, unfortunately, it has been witnessed that criminal elements have uh, entered into politics and also uh, it is alleged that some politicians provide shelter to the criminals as well. This has been observed in the state. Sir, uh, it could be because uh, there was a time when the people uh, used to vote on uh, whether the, the particular person can provide them protection or not. And they did not expect the state to come to their rescue. And because of which there was the rise of muscle men. Uh, seen in the state. So tell me, Manan, I am interested to know sir. how do civil servants like us, yes, or maybe sir. you will become civil servants, whether you become SP or in the IAS, yes, how do you stand up to such politicians who are stopping or who are interfering in the administration activities, who are following the rule of law and they are either scaring you or they are forcing you not to follow the rule of law. What does a civil servant do in this case? Sir, so civil servant can uh, follow several steps to uh, deter uh, any such uh, scaring or uh, by any uh, member of the polity or anywhere. So first would be that uh, the civil servant can make use of the uh, legal provisions. Uh, the, the can follow the law and whatever policies they have to follow. So they can straight away go to following them rather than giving into any kind of pressures that may be uh, put on him or her. So secondly, I also believe there is a perception that uh, if a particular civil servant once bows down to pressure, then subsequently also there may be some pressures applied on him. But uh, if at the very first in instance, he makes it clear that he or she would not uh, take any such uh, measures, then subsequently, uh, sir, there may not be any uh, future attempts to scare him or her. Good. So, Manan, uh you have been reading books on international relations. Yes, sir. Now, there is a trend in the foreign policies of not just India, but also all over the world, that in 60s and 70s, it was more dependent on the defense, you know, yes. aspect, yes. whether you'll be able to defend our country or not. <coughs> and so they look for alliances, they look for, you know, good international relations. Now, Along with defense, economics has also added. Right. Now, do you see any tilt in the in India's foreign policy on account of the economics? Yes, sir. Uh, I believe the Indian foreign policy has also evolved uh, in line with the increasing importance of economics uh, in international relations. So, for example, uh, the quadrilateral security dialogue. Which started as a Malabar, uh, which started as a humanitarian exercise, but subsequently it also uh, went into critical technologies uh, like uh, quantum computing or semiconductors, uh, renewable energies, which are important for any country to uh, rise uh, in the international order. So, secondly, uh, India itself has set up the uh, 
department uh, under the ministry of external affairs a department for uh, emerging and strategic technologies uh, which specifically caters to this aspect so thirdly uh, with usa also we have recently uh, signed the initiative for uh, critical and emerging technologies which focuses on semiconductors and so the supply chain resilience initiative uh, with japan and australia uh, that india has uh, become a part of so this is also in line with the increasing uh, vulnerability of a country to supply chain uh, constraints. Well, you just now mentioned about quantum computing. Yes. Government has come out with a mission on quantum. Yes, you are aware of it? Yes, sir. What uh, is it? So recently, uh, 6,000 crores of uh, funds have been granted by the union cabinet, which have to be spent over the next seven years by 2030 to promote quantum computing uh, in the country. So this will involve uh, production of uh, indigenous production of quantum computers, uh, more research and development into quantum computing. So how quantum computing is actually a quantum jump in this field? Sir, uh, it is a quantum jump because earlier we used to rely on bits which were either 0 or 1. But quantum computing relies on probability and every bit uh, or every element can be any value between 0 and 1. So there is a large scale possibility of, a, of storing uh, memory and computing in that sense that we magnify the power. Sir. Good. Thank you, Manan. I pass on to our member. Uh, Manan, sir. your Indian Foreign Service is your first choice. Yes, sir. Okay. So, this foreign service and foreign policy, Indian foreign policy. Yes, sir. Uh, if I say the Indian foreign policy is having the element of a soft touch, a humanity yes. angle, but at the same time, it is ruthlessly very, very assertive. Can you, do you agree with this statement? Uh, yes, sir, I agree that uh, the Indian foreign policy has both elements, the humanitarian touch, uh, as well as the, uh, when it comes to our core strategic interest, then we can also be assertive uh, as per the desires of the state. So now, now you support your state, you support your answer with some examples. Sir, uh, in the ongoing uh, Russia-Ukraine conflict, we have shown our humanitarian side by assisting Ukraine through humanitarian supplies. Uh, when it came to killings of innocent civilians, then we condemned the uh, Bucha killings. But when it come, came to our core strategic interest of energy security and defense supplies from our long-standing partnership with Russia, then uh, we desisted from condemning Russia as well as continued in procuring uh, crude oil and even increased our supplies to 28% of our imports from Russia. So, this is exactly. Uh, there is a talk of throughout the globe, Islamophobia, Christianophobia. Do you think there is a talk of, uh, talk has started about Hindu phobia also? Yes, sir. Um, unfortunately, uh, this has, the talk has risen. Uh, recently, I was reading about uh, an Indian person who was contesting for uh, elections in the UK, uh, one of the universities in UK. And he could not contest because there was some opposition from the people. So that was one example of. In it. UK, a few days back, a report has also come by, an NGO has come out with a report about Hindu phobia. Are you aware of it? Uh, I'm sorry, sir, I'm not aware of it. Are you aware of a United Nations resolution on Palestine? There was a presidential yes, statement in United Nations about in the two or three months back about Islamophobia. But they did not talk about Hindu phobia, so our representative put an objection there. Okay, there is a Hindu phobia also. So, what are the other things you come throughout the globe where you feel that, yeah, really Hindu phobia is also a reality now? Sir, uh, another is the issue of caste in United States. Uh, it was, uh, some experts have cited that recently a, a law was passed to ban caste discrimination. Uh, in employment. Uh, but it was not thrown to the United States, it was just yes, sir, in, in one, one state. Uh, in one state in California, mm. I remember it was mm. in one state. So some experts have said that it is also an example of uh, promoting Hindu phobia because by employing Hindus, uh, they will also have to take care of the caste factor. So sir, this is there and uh, apart from this, I'll, I will okay. read more on um, this. Uh, Manan, recently also we see that India is giving a lot of importance to smaller groups like yes. what? Like SCO, yes, sir. BRICS, yes, sir. or I2, U2, yes, sir. such type of, you know. Um, do you think that is it an alternative to United Nations groupings? Uh, because um, for an effective diplomacy, 
for to put our strength to to the, tell the world that we are here now at the international table these smaller groups are a better choice for india than the united nations uh, this united nations don't, don't you think so or am i wrong sir uh, i agree there has been a increased push by india on smaller groups which is also called as plurilateralism uh, for example the quad so the russia india china grouping or uh, the SC. so manan what could be the region why yes. india is giving push to these smaller groups so the reason for the push is that the failure of the un system uh, india is calling for reformed multilateralism because the unsc has clearly failed and it does not reflect the contemporary world order so the present uh, the smaller groups gives india the flexibility to choose like minded partners for example in the quad we have convergence on the indo pacific so on the west asian quad or the i2u2 we have convergence on food security and energy security climate change so uh, by focusing on the smaller groups we get the required flexibility and also there is more convergence on interest so it gives a uh, constructive agenda rather than conflicts which the un system is uh, often uh, deadlock over yeah okay thank you thank you thank manan you, sir manan uh, uh, we had civil servant services day yesterday yes so do you recall what was the message of sardar patel to civil servants on this day so sardar patel uh, gave the message that the civil servants of india form the steel frame of indian governance it is because uh, they are they are the paths of policy implementation uh, in the uh, indian framework and while they may not be publicly visible because of the anonymity yet they form the core on which the indian governance rests so i uh, so this is what so manan prime minister uh, our honorable prime minister also gave some guidance to civil servants yes sir. so can you recall uh, what was his guidance sir uh, his guidance was uh, that the expected ideals of a civil servant are that uh, he or she should be imaginative and innovative uh, creative and constructive uh, professional and progressive uh, while being uh, also polite uh, to the people secondly uh, he also while addressing senior civil servants he gave the message that in case they find that any policy decision can lead to creation of black money or promotion of vested interest then they must definitely examine it more clearly and give their own opinion on that rather than clearing it uh, without any application of mindset uh, manan you are a math student yes sir now math teaches you to be logical yes isn't it yes <clears throat> step by step and so two questions at the end of every theorem you write qed you remember yes what is qed uh, i'm not aware of the exact full form sir but i believe it refers to hens proof uh, that uh, is there for the theorem but i will read about now that. talking of logic uh, how will you teach logic to an illogical person while dealing with people you will come across people who are illogical so how will you teach or make them logical sir uh, even a person who uh, appears to be illogical i believe they would also have uh, some adherence to logic or reasoning we can expose them to logic in the physical world for example uh, simple uh, concepts like adding 2 plus 2 leads to 4 or if this is the cause then this is the effect for example uh, through promotion of scientific temper uh, we can explain to them the importance of logic it is not an abstract thing it is it is there in nature uh, around us so through that we can uh, make them appreciate the importance of logic sir uh, manan how will you use mathematics in the district where you will be posted sir uh, in the district mathematics can be used in uh, several ways for example a representation of data uh, mathematics teaches us tools like mean or uh, the rate of change of any variable or the depiction of bar charts so this can be used to find out for example during the pandemic uh, the rate at which the patient case load is increasing the number of oxygen uh, beds that we have so we can take a more informed decision so secondly the implementation of the aspirational districts program it realizes uh, it 
relies on the district ranking, which is an incremental ranking calculated every year through delta ranking method. So uh, by being aware of this delta ranking and how we can better perform, so the district can improve its ranking on the aspirational districts program as well. And so thirdly, through uh, the revenue collection or the financial administration. So revenue itself depends on uh, how much uh, money has can be collected or what is the potential of the district to uh, raise revenue. So through that, we can achieve better tax collection as well. Sir. All right, Manan, you are interested in <coughs> books on international relations. Yes. Sir. So let's talk about uh, India's joint military exercises. Can you recall some joint military exercises that we are doing and with which country are we doing it? Sir, uh, we have done the Malabar exercise with US, Japan, Australia. Uh, we have undertaken the Surya Kiran exercise with Nepal, the Slinex uh, exercise between Sri Lanka and India. Uh, recently, we also participated in the Orion uh, exercise uh, with France. So these are the ones I can be one last question. <coughs> you are a chemical engineer. Sir. What is deuterium used for? Sir, deuterium, uh, which is an isotope of hydrogen. Uh, sir, it uh, is used to make heavy water, which is uh, D2O, and it is used to absorb neutrons uh, during the uh, process of nuclear uh, fission, so as to slow down the speed of neutrons. Sir. Right. Thank you. Thank you. So, good afternoon, Manan. Good afternoon. So, sir. I would carry the discussion on uh, chemical engineering. Yes. You are a chemical engineer from IIT Bombay. Yes. Right. So, e waste is generated through yes. electrochemical batteries. Yes. Sir. So, how can we manage it? So, we can manage e waste in uh, several ways. The first and most important is the recycling of batteries. So, uh, an electrochemical battery contains metals like lithium or lead uh, through the lead acid batteries. These can be uh, recovered from the waste batteries and to form new batteries. So secondly, we, we can also shift uh, from uh, the use of harmful metals like lithium to sodium, which is uh, also an alternative uh, which has been proposed by the Niti IO. So this can reduce the production of e-waste. Thirdly, the uh, extended producer responsibility, uh, which has been initiated by the government through EPR certificates, we can ensure that the batteries in uh, throughout the country are being recycled. You mentioned about Niti Aayog. Yes. So tell me how Niti Aayog is better than Planning Commission. Sir, Niti Aayog uh, is better than Planning Commission. Uh, firstly, because it focuses on uh, cooperative federalism and competitive federalism through indexes like the uh, School Education Quality Index or uh, India Innovation Index. It promotes competition uh, throughout the state, throughout the country. Secondly, there is also an uh, increased collaboration with international uh, think tanks by the Niti Aayog, which promotes uh, knowledge sharing throughout the, uh, throughout the world on uh, how better policy making can be done. So, sir, these are the ways I can do that. So, Manan, you are from Uttar Pradesh and you were in Maharashtra, Bombay for your graduation for four years, about yes. four years, right? So, can you compare Uttar Pradesh with Maharashtra on socio-economic parameters? No need to give exact data, general comparison. Sir, on uh, socio-economic parameters, the first comparison would be on the per capita income. Maharashtra has higher uh, income than uh, Uttar Pradesh. Secondly, uh, on the basis of total fertility rate, Uttar Pradesh has higher TFR than Maharashtra. Thirdly, on literacy, uh, Maharashtra has higher literacy than Uttar Pradesh. And uh, so these are the parameters I can give. So both Maharashtra and Uttar Pradesh aspires to become one trillion dollar economy. Sir. Okay. So for Maharashtra, it seems possible, but Uttar Pradesh, don't you think it's an over ambitious target? Sir, uh, Uttar Pradesh has currently an economy of around 0.28 trillion dollars, uh, which is 280 billion dollars, and we target an, uh, a target a growth of around four times, that is a rise of 400 percent. So, uh, while it may be ambitious in, to achieve in the next five years, yet the uh, importance of setting this target is that we get to initiate programs like the Global Investor Summit and uh, various policies that the government is promoting to attract investment. So, this uh, is a 
a step towards that target while it may not be achievable in the next 5 years immediately but we will be on that path sir uh, you have a hobby of reflective writing yes. so how does it help you sir uh, reflective writing helps me in uh, various ways first is uh, that it helps me to think clearly that it clears my th thought process and to make uh, better decisions so secondly it also helps me to motivate myself uh, for example uh, through uh, self compassion so we can write uh, letters to ourselves to uh, promote our achievements and not get bogged down uh, by any challenges that we may face so this is another aspect and thirdly sir it helps me to analyze how i have improved over uh, the past for example the writings that i wrote one year or six months ago and since then how uh, i have improved so, so that is another thing. so thank you manan i pass on to chairman sir thank you sir so uh, manan yes, uh, from your daf we have tried to ask most of the questions subjects but uh, in case you think that something has not been covered you may let me know i can ask one last question sir uh, i would like to discuss about the internship uh, that i uh, conduct that i held at the michigan yes sir all right so what was this scholarship about sir this uh, the scholarship named as sn bose scholarship is given by the department of science and technology uh, government of india to uh, assist students from india to conduct an internship in the united states and similarly there is a reciprocal program for so who, what you were attached with university of michigan yes and sir what was the topic that you worked on sir the topic was on improving educational outcomes of the chemical engineering curriculum so i was tasked with designing a user module on the reaction profile in a chemical reactor and allowing the user to uh, to vary the parameters like reaction rate or the flow rate of reactants the temperature so that the user can better understand how these parameters affect so uh, tell me uh, up has a problem of industrial uh, chemicals and effluents yes, you know going creating water pollution yes. how does us take care of its industries wastes not going into the water sir uh, first is the they have set up an epa the environment protection agency Uh, which has a very strong enforcement mechanism so this creates a deterrence effect on the industry they take precautions beforehand uh, before they even think of discharging any uh, waste secondly so there is also a promotion of the effluent treatment plants uh, by the us government for an industrial cluster so the industry often gets assistance from the government to process their waste outside of their facility in a common uh, facility so this reduces their own cost So thank you Manan we close our interview now you thank may you, proceed to the waiting room yes. we'll call you again thank you sir thank you sir okay so Manan we will begin with your own assessment yes on your performance today sir uh, i felt that i could answer uh, most of the questions it uh, i can improve uh, my understanding for example uh, on international relations sir asked on uh, hindu phobia so i can read uh, more on that so sir, on some aspects i can uh, read sir. so uh, manan the uh, knowledge front uh, you were already very good maybe here are one or two questions here and there maybe you need to go into the depth but uh, I, we found you, we found you very bright in in all spheres your personality your communication your uh, content uh, the variety of knowledge the depth, <coughs> depth of knowledge in general and uh, concise you know your conversation style so everything is fine i think you except for little bit of uh, you were a little serious throughout your interview that uh, disposition i think you could bring some change Uh, whichever way you like maybe you can smile when somebody is asking a question so that you know you you are not just comfortable you are you look to be comfortable right and especially when you have such as good knowledge then uh, you could devote 5% of your brain engagement into your expressions <laughs> okay you can afford to right so that is one and that will bring more energy also you can speak a bit louder okay <clears throat> but on other fronts everything is speak and span perfect near perfect very good we are very thank impressed 
Manan, you are a very good candidate. You have tackled all the questions very, very well. And keep it up. All the best. Thank you, sir. So, Manan, uh, you were good. You were good on all the questions that I asked. Uh, just keep it up. Thank you. Little more energy. I think your energy level was low. <clears throat> Rest all was fine. Very well. Sir, so, uh, you asked regarding any logical person. So, uh, was my answer fine or I can improve uh, on that, sir? For maths? Yes, sir. Uh, how to convince any logical person? How to convince an illogical person on... You see, you are a logical person. You will have to detect the areas where this illogical person needs to be guided. It's not that you will teach him the word knowledge. You will have to pick up the topic and then go logically in explaining the topic. For example, uh, Sustainable development. How will you teach sustainable development to a layman? You will tell him why it is required. You will tell him the four factors of sustainable development and what each factor will help. So that you give him the logic to understand the concept. That is the way of teaching maths. That is the way of teaching Logic. Yes. All right. Yes. Then I uh, didn't ask you one question on Kerala School of Mathematics that is being asked these days. Okay. So uh, read on. Yes. What is the speciality of this school? There's something special about Kerala School of Mathematics. Right. I will read. Okay. Yes. So, uh, I share the same opinion. You are very good in all the aspects. So, keep it up. You are ready for the interview. Uh, as far as energy is concerned, what you can do is you can speak a bit louder. Yes. It will automatically increase your energy. And try smiling. Okay. So, wish you all the best. Thank you. So, I pass on to Chairman, sir. So, Manan, uh, any questions from your side? <coughs> so, uh, I feel that the feedback uh, has catered to all the queries, sir. Yeah. So, I think you have nothing much to add except for the energy part and uh, uh, you are absolutely ready for, when is your interview? 11th of May, sir. Oh, you have time. So, don't get complacent. Yes. Hmm? So, when, uh, is this your first UPSC interview? The second interview. So, when was the last one? Sir, it was uh, in CSU 2020, uh, my first attempt. How so, much you got there? So I got 157. Sir. Three less, why? So, uh, I'm not exactly sure of why the marks went low. Sir, it uh, maybe because my knowledge was not uh, very uh, uh, strong at that time. And uh, so, so that Do you find difference between that interview and today's interview? Yes, sir. Uh, I think I could answer a larger share of questions today. Uh, then I could hardly answer 50 to 60 percent. So, I think so relatively speaking, Manan, it all depends upon who comes before you and uh, what is your actual performance. It's it's uh, something, it's like a one-day international. Yes. <laughs> so, you played your ODI well today. So, you deserve, the, we have given you 70 percent today. Thank you. 193 marks. So, it doesn't compare in, in any respect from with what you got. So, you pee in present. Today, you are this level. Okay. Flush out all your bad dreams from your mind. Right. Okay. And look, look absolutely fresh. Don't look suppressed. Don't look subdued. You know, the hangover of your old marks... Maybe now it explains was maybe on your on your hovering on your head. Was it? Sir, uh, I try to not think of it today. I think I was uh, focusing on the present and uh, looking at So you did well? So I knew what it could be for a youngster. I was very high at 150 levels. Take that thing. Which board was it? Uh, Dr. Manoj Sumi Sal's board. It's already done. Look for a better future, okay? You're very good. Okay? Throw energy loud. 
इसलिए भी एनर्जी कम हो सकती है कि आप समझो थोड़े से हो अरे भाई पता नहीं मैं क्या बोल रहा हूँ वहाँ भी मेरे नंबर कम आए यहाँ भी कोई गलती ना कर जाऊँ तो बोलो बिल्कुल बुलंद बुलंदी से मतलब विद विद ऑल कॉन्फिडेंस ऑल द बेस्ट टू यू थैंक यू सर थैंक यू